Hi everybody, Golden Era Bookworm here. Today I conclude the Frank Zane series by explaining his approach to developing a beautiful set of arms. I can't describe it better than this photo. This photo really does sum up uh, Frank Zane's aesthetic approach to bodybuilding in general, but when you look at his arms, his biceps are full and round. His triceps have a fantastic sweep that beautifully tie in with the lats and the, the illusion created by his wonderfully developed arms really does create these beautiful lines that set off that phenomenal aesthetic physique that he possessed. So let's get straight into his approach for developing a set of beautiful arms. Now his approach for building arms is no different to his approach for building his entire body. It really is all about building size and then sculpting that physique down like a sculptor would a piece of stone or marble. It is about developing a classical and symmetrical look. Shape, again, shape distinguishes the bodybuilder and is particularly in the arms, one can really see a lot of differences in bodybuilders. But even in discussing the arms, once you have size, um, Frank Zane recommends to truly try and sculpt what you have. This, this um, idea is wonderfully represented in this photo. You can really see that he focused, especially when, when it came to his arms, on his triceps development. He had a really large, bulky uh, tricep, which later he learned to define, and he developed into this fantastic outer head on, on, the, on the tricep that is uh, beautifully seen in most of his silhouette shots, as you'll see in the following diagram. Now I keep coming back to this silhouette of Frank Zane from his book Symmetry because I really do think that besides it showing off how, how why he was actually called the statue, um, you can really see the effect of each body part, how he shaped it, the effect it actually had on this silhouette, on this aesthetic symmetrical silhouette. If you look now at the arm, so, so we've seen the shoulders and the effect of beautifully capped rounded shoulders, but now if we look at the arms, you obviously can't see the biceps, but I draw your attention to his triceps, and you can really actually see his outer head of his tricep bursting out really. And, and giving this wonderful flow of lines all the way down, tapering into his wrist, even his forearms, which are, which for a, a man of a, such a small frame, having such small wrists, they flare out slightly. It all creates a beautiful illusion, a tapering illusion, which adds to this aesthetic V-taper look that we all desire. So in developing his arms, Frank Zane really focused on developing the outer head. Also, when it came to the biceps, to developing peak as well as length. Um, for for um, specialization, Frank Zane actually recommends uh, training the arms twice a week if they are a lagging body part. Three to five sets, 12 to six reps, increasing the weight with each set. Uh, going for a maximum pump with only um, a maximum of two minutes or less between sets. So with exercise selection, I really like the way that Frank Zane used to think about why he used to do each of these exercises. For example, for developing his triceps, his number one choice was the close grip bench press done with the elbows flaring outwards, similar to the way Larry Scott performed them. Why? The reason was to develop the outer head, which we've seen adds to the aesthetic silhouette. Um, following the close grip bench press, he would perform an usually superset with one arm extensions behind the head which would target the rear head of the triceps. Uh, following this he would perform overhead pulley extensions to also target the rear head of the triceps and as a final finisher to really get a pump in the triceps he would either perform um, parallel bar dips or uh, bench dips or otherwise called reverse dips where you grab a bench behind you and place your feet extended onto a stool. Uh, this was a favorite also of Arnold Schwarzenegger, for example. Now, when it came to developing Frank Saint's biceps, Frank actually used a whole variety of exercises uh, using dumbbells, barbells, and even uh, pulleys. So if we look at his initial workouts from the 60s and 70s, obviously he preferred dumbbells and barbells. For example, he would use incline dumbbell curls to develop the outer head. Um, Another favorite of his, a mass builder, was the alternate dumbbell curl done standing. Um, to develop peak, he would do the bent over concentration dumbbell curl. 
Another favorite of his for developing peak, I've been reading his in his book, Mind, Body, Spirit, The Personal Training Diaries, was actually doing curls on an incline bench done face down. This would also develop the peak similar to the spider bench curl. And actually, believe it or not, he used to use the barbell curl as a finisher. Um, although he mentions early on in his career he preferred the barbell curl for size, later on in his career when he had already developed size and was going for shape and, and a final pump, he would use the barbell curl with a lightweight to get that pump into his biceps at the very end of his workout. Now for developing the forearms, um, Frank Zane mentions that he actually used to enjoy doing his forearm work right after his biceps uh, work because the forearms would, would, would already have a decent pump from the previous bicep work. For a mass builder, just like Larry Scott, just like uh, Arnold, they all used the thumbless grip when it came to wrist curling and they would always have the forearms uh, higher than the hips. This is something I've mentioned in my Larry Scott series. Notice the thumbless grip, notice that the um, wrists are higher are much higher than the hips. Um, for some reason, this really helps in the leverage and, and actually uh, helping lift more weight in the forearms. Uh, now, he would actually also allow the weight to go, uh, roll all the way down to his fingertips to develop the full forearm. Uh, that was for supinating muscles of the forearm, but for the pronating muscles, um, for example, he would use reverse curls, again, similar to Larry Scott. Uh, now, for a finisher, he would actually use reversed wrist curls done seated. Now, another thing I'd like to mention about his forearm work, but unlike the um, biceps and triceps and other body parts where he would specialize simply by doing uh, three to five sets for tw uh, six to 12 reps, he would actually go for a higher rep range. This is unlike Larry Scott and others which actually used a very low rep range for forearms. Uh, Frank Zane actually enjoyed doing 15 up to 25 reps for several sets. Now I've mentioned his split routine but just for the sake of of clarity I will repeat this again. Um, how would he divide his arm work? Well for example if it was an intermediate uh, routine he would recommend uh, it being done on a Monday and Thursday along with the rest of the upper body. Tuesdays and Fridays would focus on the lower body, only choosing three sets per exercise. Um, for an advanced bodybuilder such as himself or someone in competition, he would recommend training uh, arms with delts, both on Monday and Thursday. Tuesdays and Fridays would be chest and back, Wednesday and Saturdays, lower body, five sets per exercise. So that's it for the Frank Zane series for now. Um, I hope you've really enjoyed this series. I've covered quite a lot on Frank Zane, uh, really delving deep into his insights in developing a muscular waistline, uh, his insights in leg and especially calf development, and now finally a series on his upper body training. I was tempted to continue with the Frank Zane series because I simply have so much information about him. Um, for example, he has great information on posing and um, there's, there's some really great information that I've collected over the years, but I think I'll save it for another time. I would like to continue now with more silver era material before delving into the world of heavy duty, that is Mike Mensa. I will cover Mike Mensa in my next series, my next golden era series. And after that, for those that have been waiting, yes, Sergio Oliva is coming right after Mike Mensa. Um, and I can tell you with Sergio Oliva, there is not much information, unfortunately, but the information that I have gathered so far, some of it is really, really good, and I can't wait to share that with you. I hope you've enjoyed the Frank Zane series. I'll leave you with this fantastic single bicep shot of Frank Zane. Very rare. Um, I love the lighting. You can really see the V taper that occurs in this pose all the way from his elbows. You can draw a line down to his waist. That tilt, that twist is phenomenal. You can see how everything is in balance and those forearms are veiny as hell. It's just a great shot. I love this shot of Frank Zane. Hope you've enjoyed the series. If you have, please give it a thumbs up and share this video as well. Um, subscribe if you haven't to the Golden Era Bookworm and let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. This is the Golden Era Bookworm. Bye for now.